Hi everyone. I'm Rebecca, not Ferdinando. <laughs> Some of you might be wondering, if you've read my biography, what's the director of a Jewish museum doing at a conference about the Italian diaspora? Well, on the one hand, I could say that the themes of diaspora, migration and transculturalism that are being talked about at this conference could just as easily, whoops, be, we've gone all the way, just as easily um, be discussed in the context of the Australian Jewish experience specifically and of course Jewish history generally. But more specifically, uh, the reason that I'm here today is because of my, uh, because of a partnership, a formal partnership that my institution, the Jewish Museum of Australia, has recently entered into with Coesat Museo Italiano, along with three other culturally specific museums in Melbourne to form the Multicultural Museums Victoria Alliance. And you can see who we are up there. So this conference was a great opportunity to talk about um, Multicultural Museums Victoria, who we are, what we're about, um, and some examples from two of its member museums, Museo Italiano, of course, um, and the Jewish Museum of Australia, about how we negotiate transcultural identities in each of our museums. And I should say, um, and again, you'll know if you've read our biographies, neither of us are academics, so this isn't an academic paper, and it's perhaps a little bit less formal than some of the other ones, so bear with us. Um, the City of Melbourne, I think, as many of you will know, is um, crying out for a network like the MMV, or Multicultural Museums Victoria. It's a great multicultural city, and it's fitting that it should have a network of museums that showcase the rich and diverse cultural heritage of the city and the state. Um, and indeed, in all of our um, research and, and, and looking around the world, there is no other city in the world um, that has a network like this. Um, and in fact, there are probably very few that have as many um, museums representing specific cultures as we do in Melbourne. So it's quite a unique phenomenon and it's something that we're um, really excited about. Um, the idea of forming MMV um, was initiated about five years ago in a conversation between myself and the former director of the Chinese Museum, Marcus Shatenko, who had a, management, a background in arts management, specifically in the community performing arts sector, where he had observed a lot more collaboration and networks across the sector than he had seen in coming into the museum sector. Um, he, as a newcomer to the museum sector, could identify very easily within the museum sector, a sector within the museum sector of multicultural museums. Um, we, we talked about this, and it's something that I'd been thinking about for a long time as well, about bringing these museums together. Um, and he felt really strongly that the Jewish Museum is the longest established and one of the most highly regarded community museums in Australia, um, initiate a meeting of all of these museums to get together. So we started meeting regularly to formulate an agenda for ourselves, um, a name, a business case, and, and more recently, finally, um, a memorandum of understanding. Um, we've considered ourselves to be a network or an alliance um, on the ground for the last few years, and we've had some ad hoc joint events, for example, a couple of multicultural um, cook-offs um, that have been fantastic events, but we're only now about to officially launch Multicultural Museums Victoria to the public, and I'll say a little bit more about that later. So what are our objectives as a network? So number one, um, to raise awareness and appreciation of Victoria's diverse cultural heritage. Now, in a way, this is really each of our um, museum's individual missions. Um, each of us, this is what we basically, at the end of the day, want to achieve, um, obviously in relation to each of our own individual cultures um, and communities. So, and we really feel um, that we do this even more so coming together collectively. We can take, undertake projects of scale and of impact um, which we couldn't um, individually. Secondly, to strengthen Melbourne's reputation as a culturally rich and diverse city. Um, I think we all as museums feel very connected um, to our place in Melbourne. Um, we feel strongly about the contribution that each of us individually makes to the culture of our city. Um, and we feel that again, collectively, we can make a really strong contribution to how Melbourne is, um, is seen and regarded um, in this way. Um, thirdly, to be a vital part of Victoria's arts and cultural sector, contributing unique and multicultural voices. So again, this is a very important part of what we do. Um, people often come into museums thinking that they're just about history, that they're old 
dusty places with cabinets with old artefacts but um, in fact museums today don't do that at all as we know um, so that still is the thing in some people's minds um, and in particular contemporary art is a really important part of all our museums as well and even though we all do deal with history and we do all have um, old dusty artefacts that we usually clean up quite nicely to put on display and we all have archives and historical documents all of us also present contemporary art in our exhibitions. We collect contemporary art, or each of us in different ways. And one of the really important things we want to do is have a presence in, in the um, arts and cultural scene in Victoria and have that multicultural presence. Finally, and this is really very much our own internal driver in terms of what we're trying to achieve, is to increase the reach and impact of each of the individual museums. Um, each of us work very hard um, in, with very limited resources, we're very lean operations um, and we all use the term frequently that we punch above our weights in what we do in terms of our um, budgets and capacities. Um, um, but so we really felt very strongly that yes, a network is a great way to create a platform to work together and to do joint projects. Um, but more importantly, to create a joint brand um, is something that multicultural museum Victoria that is some, it would be something more compelling and more relevant to a wider audience. Um, it creates a story um, that might attract the attention of people who might not otherwise come to any one of the individual museums but might be attracted by the, by the idea of multicultural museums. And this really comes to life in something as simple as when you look at our brochure and you just suddenly see this brochure with this whole array of museums that presents this story about multiculturalism in a city and it becomes a very attractive proposition, much more so. I never really knew I wanted to go to the um, Jewish Museum down in St Kilda, but wow, Multicultural Museum Victoria, that's something. So um, we really feel that it makes um, us all much more compelling and relevant to a wider audience and we're able to have a much greater impact than we can individually. Also, of course, very pragmatically, it creates a much more compelling case for financial support from government, philanthropy and the corporate sector and a more powerful voice when collectively lobbying. Uh, the MMV also has um, great, um, has, is particularly relevant and has great potential for um, impact in the current political climate in Australia. In 2015, the Scanlon Foundation, together with Monash University, undertook a longitudinal study of social cohesion in Australia. It found that Australians have strong support for multiculturalism and for immigration, but are increasingly concerned about national security and terrorism, violent extremism and the treatment of asylum seekers. In response to the report, a state government ministerial task force developed the strategic framework to strengthen Victoria's social cohesion and resilience of its communities, and they're all the terms that the um, previous presenter was using. Um, they're very common in the policy context. A key priority is to support a strong sense of belonging, shared values, trust and identification with Australia, and to embrace diversity as a strength. The framework's objectives include the increase of intercommunity and intercultural interaction and understanding. Museums and other cultural heritage institutions have of course been shown to play critical roles as places where diverse communities meet to better understand these issues and work together towards a stronger society and a better future. The Ethnic Communities Council of Victoria in its discussion paper on multicultural policy way back in 2011 recommended the encouragement of the positive elements of cultural diversity through the arts and media messages and the promotion of public events which are likely to showcase the richness, variety and cohesiveness of the whole Victorian community. Without a doubt, MMV represents and showcases these positive elements of cultural diversity. First of all, through creative and inspiring and educational exhibitions and programs, which we all present individually and collectively. Um, secondly, through the stories that we all tell of the contribution of migrants and people from culturally diverse communities to Australian society, and thirdly, and this is something that's um, been pointed out to us by a number of people who have heard about our project, our alliance is in its own right a demonstration of intercultural harmony where five different ethnic commun and religious communities are working together. And in fact, one of the things that always jumps out at me, and this is my own particular bias, but to look at the logos of the Jewish Museum of Australia and the Islamic Museum of Australia side by side is not something that would be achieved in many contexts context, um, today. And it's something that we're particularly proud of. So our first project, as I mentioned, um, we're launching ourselves publicly um, next month. And our first project is Grandmothers. Um, and it's one that puts a smile on everyone's face. And in first, when we first talked about it at a meeting a couple of years ago, 
um, when it was discussed as an idea for a first exhibition. Everyone, all of the CEOs of the, the museums, a huge smile appeared on their face when we talked about it. Um, there'll be five concurrent exhibitions on the theme of grandmothers and a um, very rich and diverse public program um, exploring lots of themes around grandmothers with lots of different activities and events. And it's running from May to October 2018. Um, beyond that project, uh, our future plans, and we have, um, a, of course, a strategic plan. We set out our ideas, and a lot of it, though, is subject to funding because we're all currently pressed and don't have capacity to do more than we're currently doing. But we do have great hopes and aspirations, and if we do get um, some injection of funding to support us, we hope to be able to um, work more, move to be doing regular joint um, exhibition projects of this nature every um, two to three years, perhaps. Um, we hope to work on a joint school education program. Um, there are a lot of areas of the school curriculum um, which talk about migration and national identity and all of the kinds of things that are explored in our museums and we'd love to be able to put together a joint program where students can visit multiple museums and have comparative experiences. Um, also getting more into the space of tourism. Um, as I said, one of the things that um, the um, government promotes about Victoria and Melbourne is its multiculturalism um, and we feel like that we can um, make a great offering and there's a lot of great work that we can do in developing joint um, products for the tourism market. Um, so I just want to say now, and I guess just having set that context of MMV and what brings the Jewish Museum of Australia and Coasa Museo Italiano together today in this context, um, I do just want to um, now move on, and this is part two of our paper, um, where we're really just going to talk a little bit more about um, uh, Museo Italiano and the Jewish Museum. Um, just before we go into that, and I um, call Ferdinando up to do that, um, uh, having, I just wanted to give, have a little segue about the concept of transculturalism and transcultural identities. Um, when we first heard about this conference, um, one of the um, uh, colleague of Ferdinando suggested that we should present something together about, um, about MMV. Um, and we could say that it obviously had relevance to many of the themes of this conference, but to be very honest with you, neither of us had heard of the term transcultural. Um, so, and this is where I get very naive to follow up. <laughs> so I tried to dig out my old academic um, hat from my old um, postgraduate days, do a little bit of research about the term, and, become, and it became clear to me immediately, very clearly, of course, that there are many, very, very many def different definitions of the transcultural, which I'm sure have been and will continue to be used variously through this conference. I um, came across one fairly simple definition of transcultural identity by Professor Carola Suarez Orozco, a cultural psychologist at UCLA, whose research focuses on elucidating the child, adolescent and young adult experience of immigration. She writes that for children, the task of immigration is creating a transcultural identity. She explains, these youth must creatively fuse aspects of two or more cultures, the parental tradition and the new culture or cultures. In doing so, they synthesise an identity that does not require them to choose between cultures, but incorporates traits of both cultures. So this obviously made a lot of sense, um, I think, to me and to Fernando, and we immediately saw the relevance of this term to what we do in both of our museums. We tell the stories not only of the migration experiences of Italian and Jewish Australians, but the unique and hybrid identities formed and the culture created by Italians and Jews in Australia through the reciprocal interaction of their traditions and customs with local content and values.